In this video, I'm going to talk about using a truck to skid material. That can be logs, that can be whole trees, that can be brush, anything like that. Uh, of course, the reason to do this is because rather than doing things by hand, you can move a lot of heavy material very easily with horsepower instead of manpower. So it's a big labor saver. You can move stuff from a long ways away, you can pull stuff uphill uh, that would otherwise take a lot of time and energy. So it's a great technique to use. When I first started doing tree work, I was in the city where there's no space for this kind of thing for the most part, but now that I'm in a rural area, it's become a crucial skill and one that I use a lot. In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about the truck, the hitches, ropes, blocks, chokers, all the things that I use, and then some of the techniques, tips and tricks, and then I will show some of the work. Skidding material is very simple and doesn't require that much equipment. You've already got your truck, you'll need a hitch on it of course, uh, a rope to actually do the skidding, some form of choker to connect to the load, and then ideally you'll have a shackle between the choker and the rope so the choker isn't rubbing on the rope itself. That's really all you need. Uh, beyond that, you really want you know, a good block or two to hang in a tree and redirect. That way you can get something from downhill, redirect it to the road and actually pull where you're able to pull. Uh, and there's anything in between. It's a really powerful system once you get it figured out and kind of learn the ins and outs of it. So I'm gonna talk about that today. The rope I use for skidding is a Samson Stable Braid. It's a 5 8 uh, so it's quite strong. What you don't want to do is use your best rope, use a brand new rope, that kind of thing, because you know skidding is probably going to be hard on stuff. It's going to be laying on the ground. If you don't set your, if your system's not perfect, you might rub somewhere. So don't use a brand new rope. What I have is this is my old 5 8 uh, rigging line for negative rigging and that kind of thing. And you know eventually you need to retire those ropes so you can kind of downcycle it into a skidding line because it's a little bit less uh, of a critical scenario. Obviously your rope still needs to be in good condition, but you know it's a great use for a, a rigging line once you've retired it. I prefer 5 8 over half inch all the time because overkill, strong system, is always going to be better. Um, this is 200 feet. I keep it in a bag along with all my other equipment. And when I'm skidding, of course, I find the best thing to do is make a bowl in with the Yosemite tie-off because you're going to be yarding on this pretty hard, so you obviously need something that comes undone easily. When you're skidding something, of course, you don't want to just tie the rope directly onto it. The, uh, whatever the end is is probably going to be dragging on the ground. It's going to be getting a lot of abrasion, and if you use a rope on your piece, you're just going to tear it up almost immediately. So you need some kind of a abrasion resistant metal choker to actually hold the material and then use a shackle to connect that to the rope. There are two different types of chokers I like to use. The first is a standard cable logging choker. This is a six footer. Of course the design of this, the stiffness, allows you to tuck it under a log even in heavy brush and then it just clips on. And that's not going to come undone. The downside of this is the stiffness of it makes it not as good for uh, grabbing onto loose brush piles. This is going to kind of float around and open up. It's not going to bite the load as easily. So when I'm doing you know, a big pile of limbs or something like that, that's when I use a, a chain choker. This is a slip hook from the Portable Winch Company. I find these are a lot nicer than, you know, bigger slip hooks that would come with towing chains or something like that because it has a smaller opening. You can get it through and it's a lot less likely to slip off um, before the load is applied to it. Like I said earlier, of course, you could skid stuff with just a rope and a truck, but if the material is somewhere else and you need to redirect the force, 
of course you need to have a block hang it in the tree somewhere you can pull from down there redirect the block and to the driveway this is a c m i five eighths block with an adjustable sling i find this works really well for the work that i do uh... you certainly want to be using a block because you know that has very little friction and you don't want to be wasting your pulling energy in the system you want all that force to be transmitted directly to the piece so a block is far better than a rigging ring in this system because otherwise you're just you know adding friction here you're wasting energy and you're putting more uh, strain on the ropes than is necessary another tool that can be very useful for skidding material is a skidding cone this one is from the portable winch company uh, the same as that hook i showed you and it's really nice because you put the choker through that opening the uh, butt of the end of the log can go in here or all your brush and it keeps that from catching on the ground or on brush as you're actually skidding the piece. It'll tear up the ground less, it'll tear up the brush less. If you have trees around, it'll slide past the tree instead of catching on it or you know, tearing a piece of bark off or something like that. So this thing can give you a lot of advantages. I don't always use it, but sometimes it's incredibly helpful. The hitch that I have on my truck is a combination pintle and ball hitch, and this works really well for skidding. You got your piece tied on at the end. All your slack is in the bag. You pull the slack out, and then it's really easy to grab this, you know, midline with the girth hitch and just hook it on like that. Uh, this has a big bend radius, so you're not going to be damaging the line on a hitch like this. And even when you put a big load on this, uh, it tends to come off very easily. You could also put a porter app here for midline installation. Um, I don't find it necessary. If I was pulling trees over or doing something in a much more critical situation instead of skidding on the ground, I would tie a bowl and on a bite and use a different hitch that has a closed clevis so there's no way anything could come undone. But for skidding things at ground level, uh, this works great. Sometimes you might want to skid from the front of the truck instead of the rear, particularly if you need better visibility on what's going on. So that's when I use the front tow hooks on this and one of these big 7 8 shackles because this will fit right through. Take your girth hitch on the line, screw that pin in, and there you go with your midline attachment. Even when you put a big load on this, you can jiggle this line, unscrew the pin, and that comes right back out. So I find that to be a really good system. Uh, for pulling on the front. Well, the rain's too noisy now, so I moved inside. But anyway, I think by now uh, I've talked about all the parts in the system, how everything works together, how to attach things, so let's get to work in a minute. But I wanted to make a few other points that I think are worth mentioning. Uh, with enough ropes and blocks, you can you know, transfer power from your truck just about anywhere. But depending on where you actually need to get the material, you know, you might have to undo your block for every one of those turns if you need to get it a long ways. So if that's the case, you know, one or two blocks uh, of redirect is about as much as you want to do, otherwise it's just going to be really time consuming. Unless of course you really need to get that material, you know, to a certain point. Another technique you're going to see me use in this video is cutting the butt end of the log round with the chainsaw. You know, you're effectively doing the same thing as the skidding cone does, but you don't need to drag a skidding cone down into the woods. Uh, on bigger material, it can be really useful, um, you know, if you're not using a logging skidder to, to haul stuff. Um, and you'll see how, when I do that on a log, it's able to move over brush instead of dragging it all with it. So that's really useful. Anyway, all that said, uh, let's get to work. Here is the project today. There are these two dead firs that uprooted. There's a bigger one 
over there and the plan is to hang a block in a tree over here, maybe over there, and use the truck and rope to skid them to the road so the customer can cut them up for firewood. The most important things to keep in mind when you're setting up skidding logs are just being aware of all your angles, having straight lines between the pieces, the block, and the truck. And then once you've got that figured out, it's just a matter of judging the weight of the piece, the amount of resistance on it, the strength of your ropes and blocks, and then of course the amount of traction that you have with the truck. Uh, if any of those aren't up to the task, it's not going to go well but I'm going to be using my F350 diesel and 4 low, a uh, 5 8 stable braid, and a good CMI block. So I've got lots of uh, strength to make these pulls and get this stuff to the road, uh, and it'll be pretty straightforward. I've got the system set up now, and you can see what's going to happen. The uh, line is going to be tied onto the hitch of the truck on the road, Got lots of travel up the driveway. That goes to a block hanging in the tree at, you know, 12 feet. Uh, height prominence, of course, is really important. You don't need to go 50 feet up a tree, but you want to get high enough that it's providing lift for the log. So that block turns it down to here. I'm attaching it with a uh, 5 8 Samson stable braid. That's on a shackle. And then that's on a six foot logging choker. So that'll provide a lot of, you know, good bite on the log. Everything is really strong and we'll get the stuff right here to the landing. hooked on, take up the slack, make a bite, and there we go. Another item worth noting is from the truck I can actually see the block over there in the tree. So that's really handy. I can see when my knot uh, is getting to it so I don't smash that through the block and ruin the line. I can also see in the mirror, and I have a backup camera here that's pointing to the road so I can really see what's going on. So even though the truck has quite a lot of torque, I mean this is a 7.3 diesel in four-wheel drive low, you can still feel the resistance on the piece. And you know, if you feel it getting hung up, you can stop and readjust so you don't break the line or something like that because this truck absolutely has the power to do that if you weren't careful. So as long as you set your system up right, you won't put those forces on it. And if you're paying attention, you can tell, you know, where you're at resistance and tension wise.
as we get further and further away, it's a longer and longer pull. I've got to drive further up the driveway, but luckily your driveway is situated in a way that I've got all the room I need. Ooh. And there's our neat, tidy pile of logs. Everything came from down there, pulled it up here, and on to the next piece. All right, this next one's a lot bigger. Probably take it in three pieces. That's good.
think that's enough for now, but I hope some of you have found this video to be useful and informative. Obviously, this is just the way that I do it. There's numerous setups you could do, um, but this is the fundamentals and the tools that I use. Um, you know, watch some other videos, look at the gear you have, think about what you need to accomplish, and you know, play with some of it yourself. It's a really powerful technique to be able to move logs, to be able to move whole trees with the brush on them, to be able to move big piles of limbs. So check it out and see how it might uh, work into your projects.